What's up guys, Evil D here, and tonight we're going to focus on false friends between English and Esperanto. Esperanto and English, depending on what way you're looking at it. Now, some of these are quite obvious, and I'm going to start with the obvious ones, and then I'm going to work up to the mind fudge ones, and then I'm going to show you one that just completely messed with my head. It, like, destroyed my whole concept of reality. Okay, let's start with the nice easy one, shall we? So everyone has probably encountered this one straight up. One of the first words you ever learnt was fadati. And obviously it means too fair, as in like, how are you doing type of thing. Now, everyone when they first look at that, they go, that means a fart. No, it doesn't mean that. And that was actually a real criticism of Esperanto way back at the beginning of it from English speakers. They're like, I don't want one of my most common words mean to fart. Because remember back then everyone was gentlemen and no one actually farted. People didn't have bum holes back then. But yeah, anyway, so farty means too fair. If you want to let one rip, that is furuzi, okay? Furuzi. Okay, so here's where things start getting a little bit more interesting. <laughs> okay, so this one messed with my head a while back when I was trying to write a short story in Esperanto. The word that messed with my head was balanci, because it does not mean to balance, as you would think by just looking at it. Balanci actually means to rock or to swing. And the best way to look at it is, for instance, the word for seesaw is balancilo. Okay, balancilo. So a tool for swinging or rocking. This one took me a very long time to wrap my head around. And the word in question is controlling. It sounds like and it looks like to control. Does not mean that at all. Controli means to check on or to check, okay? If you want to control something, it is generally regi. Or it could be a few other words depending on context. But controli is the word for to check, okay? And it took me so long to wrap my head around this one because my mind was looking at that going, no, it means like a control. This is one I've seen used in error quite a bit by new learners of Esperanto. And I'm not sure why, or maybe it's just because the English word actually has two meanings. Now they want to say standard as in that's standard or that's normal type of thing. The word for standard in Esperanto is actually normo, but I've seen used quite a bit standardo. And the reason being is because standardo translates into English as standard, but it means the big banner type that you would see in a military procession or going into war type of thing. You know, with the Romans, how they had their big banners type of thing. Standardo is that. This the type of thing that we will carry to the Fina Venko. But yeah, so don't mix those two up. This is one I will never forget because I think an Esperantist messed with me when I was learning Esperanto. I learned the word for adult, which is plen crescula, okay? And then one day I met an Esperantist and he said, oh, you can use the word adulto. Adulto is just a new word and it means adult, okay? I don't know if that's because he was still learning or if he was trying to mess with me, but it, it worked. It took me a little bit before I figured out that adulto means adultery. So adulti means to commit adultery. So do not interchange those words. That could go really bad. Here's one where English words entering into Esperanto have kind of messed things up a little bit. So for instance, when we're talking about sports in Esperanto, there's generally two words that you can use pretty much for every sport. There's an internally created one, which is a combination of different words. And then there's usually the word that's been imported by English. And that's the one that's kind of taken over just because it's so commonly used in other languages as well. So for instance, the word for football in uh, Esperanto is futbalo. So when people see that, they go futbalo. Ah, balo means ball. That must be another word for ball, okay? And they do the same thing with futo. Balo means like a big fancy dress ball where everyone goes and they dance and evil deer rocks in and like whoop, whoop, whoop type of thing. So yeah, balo is a big fancy dress ball while pilko is the one you kick. Don't try and interchange those because if you try to kick a balo, things are going to go bad. Here's one that messed with me when I was learning Esperanto and I was learning from a book. I found out that the word for pencil was crayono, okay? And it didn't explain why it was crayono because I looked at that and I went, that means crayon. And then I saw a picture of a pencil and I go, that's not a crayon. And then obviously I had to learn that crayon means pencil. And obviously then I thought, what's the word for crayon then? <laughs> the word for crayon is pastelo. So remember that crayon is pastelo, you know crayons. I don't know, uh, this is actually something I've discussed with other English speakers. They get a bit confused depending on where they are in the world, what a crayon is. You know, crayon's one of those things that you chew on in school. Well, I did, I don't know about you guys. So yeah, crayon is pastelo. Pencil is crayon. Here's one that can cause a little bit of confusion for English speakers when they're translating the word dung. Okay, they look at dung and they go, oh, that looks like dungo. No, it's not that. Dungo means employment. 
Dungi is too higher, okay? So, totally different concepts there. You don't want to mess the English done with the Esperanto employment, yeah? They don't, unless you work for cleaning up shit, then that could kind of work, but no, don't make that mistake. Here's one where another new learner of Esperanto when I was learning Esperanto messed with me again. He told me that the word for forest was foresto. It's not foresto, that is arbado for forest, okay? Foresto is actually two words. It is for, which means away, esto, which means be. So foresto means absence. Here is one that's going to completely blow your mind, okay? The word for novel in Esperanto is not novello, okay? Novello is a short story, the complete opposite of what a novel is in English. So novello means short story. So what's the word for novel then in Esperanto? That is romano, okay? Which almost sounds like a, a romance novel or something like that. So that's kind of a way of remembering it. So remember, romano means novel in English um, and novello means short story in English. Here's one where I see used in error a lot. And this is alineo and paragrafo, okay? Alineo means a paragraph. Paragrafo means a section within a legal document. That's a common mistake I see made quite a bit. Not like a showstopper or anything, but just remember, alineo is a paragraph, paragrafo is a section within a legal document. Okay, here's one you do not want to use in error, okay? The word for peach is not picho. Picho is a vulgar word for the female organ down below. The word for a peach is perisico, okay? So remember, perisico means peach, picho means not peach. Here's one I see every now and then used in error, and that is tualeto. Tualeto does not mean toilet. The word for toilet, as you all probably know, is netseo, or it is baneo, depending on, you know, what you're trying to specify. Tualeto is all the tools that a woman uses to get herself ready, to, you know, do her hair, her makeup, all that type of stuff. So, you know, kind of like her handbag, pretty much. Okay, so here's one that isn't quite a false friend, but it's a false underlining concept friend. I don't know if that even makes sense, but let's look at it. So I'm gonna put two colors up on the screen, purpura and viola. Now, purpura translates into English as purple. That does not look like purple to me. Maybe that's a cultural thing, maybe that's an Australian thing. I don't know, maybe that's a language thing. But apparently, our idea of what purple is differentiates around the world and based on culture, based on all sorts of things. So obviously if you really need to specify that that's purple and you want to make sure you're talking about the correct colour, just look at these two here and pick the correct one, okay? Viola and Purpura. Because they don't look like what I imagine what Viola and Purpura would mean in Australian English. Now, obviously this is not going to affect pretty much really anyone unless you're in one of those situations where he's like, cut the puta puta wire, because if you cut the viola wire, everyone's going to blow up, we're all going to die. And that's it for my false friends today. So if you've liked this video, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, I will beat the beep out of you until you're puta puta. Now try and imagine what color he would be. <laughs> And as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters who are Jean Figueria, Alexander Toletterson, Colt Arn, Slavish Kolayev, Tommy Lindsley, Robert Nielsen, Sarah SC, Lupe, JZ Knuckles, and Sarah SC. And if you want to donate to my channel, you can through my Patreon link down below in the description.